Lawrence, thank you for joining me. Now, you're pretty well known within the CME community, but for those that perhaps don't know you so well, how has your career come to this point and what do you actually spend your time doing? Well, CME is continuing medical education. It's an independent form of medical education. Now, I know this has pharma in the name. And pharma plays a very important role in CME. So when I'm talking about this, I'm really referring to pharmaceutical industry supported independent continuing medical education. Now, with that said, what do I spend my days doing? I spend my days trying to see where the educational needs of doctors and other healthcare professionals exist in the US, in Europe, and, and the rest of the world. I'm trying to figure out the right educational strategies to try to meet these educational needs, meet the needs of the people who might want to fund this education, and develop the education so that we can have a measurable impact on changes in these physicians and healthcare professionals' competence, performance, and patient outcomes. It really is a 24-hour-a-day job if you think about it. And from your perspective, what does CME need to deliver to really be valuable? So the key question that I get all the time is just that. What is the value of CME? And it really is, to me, very simple. The value is meeting the educational need of the healthcare professional. It's really that simple. The question really should be, how do you measure how well you've met those needs and then how can you demonstrate the value? And so really you have to look at the educational continuum. The educational continuum starts from a measurable needs assessment. What are the qualitative and quantitative gaps and needs of the, the learners? How can we develop education to meet those needs? In that education you have learning objectives. At the end of this activity, the learner will be able to list the 747 different ways you can manage droopy left eyelid syndrome, or whatever it is, right? Uh, we want to have measurable objectives. When we measure the objectives, we have our outcomes. So if we're looking to change knowledge, we measure change in knowledge. If we're looking to change competence, which is how you apply knowledge, measure competence. If we want to measure performance, we have techniques to measure changes in performance. You can also get really sophisticated and measure changes in patient health, population health, but it really is how well are we meeting those learning objectives? And we can take that further. If we ask our learners how many patients with the condition that we're talking about they're treating, now we have a measure of how many patients will be impacted by how many physicians took the educational course, and we have a real measure of what the impact is, and that translates to value. So that's a wonderful theory. You've, you've outlined there what CME needs to deliver, but in practice, how well is that actually being done right now? Yeah, so, so you ask we. Who's we? Well, we as educators know that we are doing it correctly because we design it properly, for lack of a better word. It's a politically correct word. There's a lot of education out there that may not necessarily follow the overall approach that I just outlined. And so the reality is there's the collective we probably shouldn't be the full collective we who are doing education. There are some people who are doing really quality, high-level information delivery and information transfer and knowledge delivery, but they're not really educators. A lot of the education is based on what they feel or someone has the opinion of uh, a need amongst the healthcare community or maybe a key opinion leader said, we need to develop a course on X. And so somebody goes and develops a course on X. Nobody actually asked the learners, what do you need to know about X? Or we have to be sophisticated and try to find out what they don't know about X. I say all the time, they don't know what they don't know. So you can't simply say to them, hey, what do you need education on? Because there's a whole lot of things they don't know. So the collective we should probably be a little bit more of a more defined we. And we as educators should be developing this education based on the principles and practice that we learn, we follow, and we teach. And then the collective CME will be better and the outcomes and value will be better to go back to your last question. We've talked about good practice with CME, but if you were to look at CME programs right now, what would you say is probably the single biggest thing they tend to get wrong or the single biggest mistake? Calling it CME when it's really not. Learners are very smart. You can't disguise a promotional program as CME and expect the learners to think that it's CME. 
I, I had this discussion just yesterday, and the reality is our learners, our physicians and other healthcare professionals are very smart, and they're adults, and they can make their own determination if something is independent or non-independent. Don't try to make them figure out why it's called one thing and, and it's not the other. The other thing is inappropriate use of media or venues. There's a lot of online CME, eCME it's called, that just doesn't learn from the rest of the world of how to do things on the internet. Hour and a half long complete uh, videotape of a symposium that happened. No one wants to sit in front of a computer for an hour and a half and watch something that they probably would have slept through live at the meeting. Short form programming, interactive programming, engaging programming, that works. And we have to learn from outside of CME as well as inside of CME. Live activities that are developed that don't really interact or, or measure the needs of the people in the room or have the right faculty member. Oftentimes you have a great educational uh, activity developed and the faculty just aren't good educators. And so they're up there and they're not talking to the audience, they're not understanding what the level of sophistication understanding of the audience is going in and then the education becomes less effective or impactful. So it's incumbent upon us as educators to work with our faculty to make sure that they are being good educators and delivering the right content and embracing the power of whatever medium or venue that we're using.